Greetings brothers, today we're talking about five units that you might be sleeping on and should consider including in your next Blood Angels army. So welcome to the weekly tactics video and I am John the Blood Angels Commander and today we're going to be talking about five units you could potentially be sleeping on that could add some value to your Blood Angels army lists. We're going to start with the Terax Siege Drill. Now this is an expensive Forge World unit, it's about £100, but it has some great things that it really brings to the tabletop. One is it's a Toughness 8 vehicle with a 3-up Armour of Contempt Safe which makes it fairly durable. It's got a cool rule called Subterranean Assault, which basically means it's going to deep strike for free. You're not going to have to pay any points to put it in reserve. When it does, it's going to be nine inches away from the enemy standard uh, deep strike rules. However, every model that's inside it, and it can carry 12 Blood Angels infantry, can't do jump packs, Terminators, Primaris, Centurions, but um, 12 Firstborn Marines, they can obviously be inside and they also can disembark or they can choose not to disembark. Again, nine inches away from the enemy. If you're gonna do Blood Angels and you wanted to do Relentless Assault, you could easily fill this thing with like two or three units and suddenly in turn two, you could have four units in the opponent's deployment zone if they leave you enough space. And um, when it does arrive from Deep Strike, it's gonna benefit from the icon of the angel. So if you want to put an icon angel character inside it, that's going to let it reroll charges. It's really interesting on the charge because your three attack space, you know, you can get plus one from shock assault, you can get plus one from savage echoes, and it's got a weapon skill four that doesn't deteriorate. So even on one wound left, you're still hitting on fours. You obviously get less attacks with one wound, but your weapon skill doesn't deteriorate. And what is interesting is this is a minus four Strength times two, so that's strength 14 with plus one to wound. So you're wounding anything in the game on twos. You are D3 plus three, but against vehicles, you're D3 plus six. So coming in the backfield, making an eight inch charge or a nine inch charge with plus one, benefiting from the icon of the angel. And basically those, uh, those attacks are always gonna be weapon skill four. This guy can also benefit from quake bolts. So uh, if you did have Quake Bolts in your list, then potentially he's hitting on Weapon Skill 3. He is also armed with five Melta Guns, or it's a Melta Cutter they call it, but it's basically a heavy five Melta Gun. So when you do arrive from Deep Strike, you've got a bit of shooting threat as well. It comes with a couple of Storm Bolters, but you could update these to Vor Kite Chargers if you want. Um, it gives you one extra strength and gives you mortal wounds on sixes. Since you have a couple of them, it's eight shots. So you're basically being 10 points to do a mortal wound, maybe two if you're lucky in the shooting phase. I'm considering running one of these. You could obviously put scouts inside it. You could obviously put like tactical marines inside it, uh, assault marines, death company without jump packs and various other characters. It's something that I have recently bought. I have yet to run it. But I, I think that in a Blood Angels list, it's scary. And sometimes the biggest problem we have is like big enemy units that are that are difficult to take out um, because they're high toughness, toughness eight or something. Well, this thing is going to wound toughness eight on twos. And if the enemy is a vehicle, then if you make that charge, they're going to have a really bad day. That's potentially like 45 damage uh, just from the drill. That's before you factor in five melter gun shots and any other shooting it may have. I like the Terax a lot. And last thing, it doesn't have the Marshall legacy keywords. So you're not going to pay any CP to include it. The only thing you're gonna to have to pay is the 105 bucks to forge roll to get one, but it's a cool model. It's gonna get in your opponent's face, get units into the enemy's deployment zone. I like it. Next up is the Hammer Strike. So I really haven't seen many people running these Storm Speeder Hammer Strikes. I, or any of the Storm Speeders actually, maybe I've seen a couple of uh, Dark Angels list running them, but I have run this hammer strike four times now. Um, it's got a 16 inch move, it's 145 points, which I guess equates almost to two land speeders. I guess the argument could be would you be better taking two land speeders? Well, this offers a little bit more firepower than two land speeders, and that you've got those 36 inch minus three, three damage missiles. And I like stuff with flat damage because I hate damage rolls and I hate having to reroll damage rolls. In fact, I don't even do it now. I think spending command points on damage rerolls is a really low value spend of your command points. So I try, 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 try not to do it. Um, it also has a three shot melt destroyer, and then it has a couple of grenades if you do get within 18 inches. And I, I'm, first time I played it, I missed the fact that it has two crack storm grenade launchers. So 16 inch move with a multi-melter or a heavy melter destroyer, 
uh, by uh, just a mouth to destroy, sorry, no heavy, uh, means that at 28 inches, so 12, half the range, plus the 16, so if you're within 28, it's very easy to get within half range, get that additional D6 plus 2, and it, the 16 inch move, I guess, is the same as land speeder, but it is good to have. I think in turn one, you can sit quite far back because of your really long range move, and you can fire off some of those three damage minus three missiles, and in reality, they seem quite reliable. Um, I think it's just, you know, there's one of the reasons people leaned into Redemptor Dreadnoughts was that they had that three damage plasma cannon. The, the thing about the Redemptor Dreadnought is the number of shot swings all over the place, whereas this, you just know, right, I'm getting two missiles, and then I'm going to get my three melter shots, and then I'm going to get a couple of grenades. I like it a lot. I've played it a few times now. We obviously know land speeders and attack bikes synergize quite well with what Blood Angel's trying to do. In in reality, this thing seems to synergize for me. 10 wounds, toughness 6, 3 up armor of contempt save. It's fine. It's not amazing, but it's fine. And um, it's much needed fire support. Uh, you can obscure it maybe for a turn or two and then bring it out later in the game. And if you focus it down on a single target, you're going to be able to do some damage. I mean, like, uh, if you get within half range, that means potentially, I suppose, on average, your Melter Destroyer is going to do five, and you've got the missiles. So I could easily see this thing doing, like, 10 or 15 wounds, maybe even more in a single turn if you factor in those grenades. And that would be against high toughness enemies. You know, like, toughness uh, seven enemies, maybe even, maybe, like, half that, maybe, like, six to eight wounds against toughness eight enemies. I like it a lot. 145 points. It seems decent. Uh, the shooting seems fairly reliable. Uh, is two land speeders better? Possibly because they don't get profiled. But my experience of land speeders usually is when they get targeted, they do just die. Um, whereas this 10 wound seems to be enough that it, it will linger around. Usually, for like at least it'll survive a turn of shooting and usually it'll survive one turn of shooting with reasonably decent so like you know maybe it's left with like three wounds and then you're not on the lowest bracket uh, if you're running a tech marine this might be even better but i don't think you need a tech marine to make the hammer strike worth it uh, i've enjoyed painting my one and making it and i'm playing it and i think it's going to be in my next tournament list honestly all right next up the lord of death a lot of you guys are sleeping on him uh people will argue all day long that Mephiston is a bad character because a sword is D3 damage. Well, I always say that I don't give a shit about damage. In 9th edition, I always prioritise people or characters or squads that could stay alive. And this is one of the reasons probably that I took Terminators a little bit. Because I think Terminators are really good into two damage weapons. You know, they, they just get basically 100% more survivability if you're fighting into two damage weapons because damage is wasted. Uh, unlike, you know, so they basically have to do two times two wounds to kill a single Terminator. And I've had value out of Terminators, and in some ways this is why I think Mephiston is good. Yes, he cannot jump in like he used to in previous editions and, you know, buff himself up and double fight like you used to, but I think if you're looking for a survivable character that you're not going to have to spend command points on, then Mephiston is that character. Uh, he's a, arguably the most survivable Blood Angels we have, right? Because he's a toughness five, six wound character. And the only other character we've got that's got six wounds is Dante, and he's toughness four. I suppose you could answer, argue Dante is minus one to hit. But I think that that minus one to hit gets countered by a lot of things. Like a lot of things can do re-rolls, like, you know, sisters can do full re-rolls. Um, usually Dante's minus one to hit, I feel like, saves one or two attacks. Whereas I think that, like, the additional point of toughness, let's say you're being hit by, like, a, a strength eight weapon. So strength eight weapon is going to wound Dante on twos. Strength eight weapon is going to wound Mephiston on threes. It's, in my experience, I just think the higher points of toughness gives more value because n very few people are re-rolling wounds at the moment whereas a lot of people are re-rolling hits that's and maybe that's just in my meta but that's how i feel ninth is going a lot of re-roll hits not so many re-roll wounds so i would argue that plus one toughness is a lot more valuable than plus than minus one to hit i think it would be the same if sangry guard if sangry guard with toughness five i think they'd be a complete other monster as opposed to the minus one they have to hit um the other thing that you've got to factor in with Mephiston is he's got that five up, feel no pain. And if you have six wounds, on average, if you had to roll six dice, you would roll two five ups. So essentially what that really means 
is he has two additional wounds, right? You could look at, like, if you just want to break down the maths, this really means he's toughness 5, 8 wounds. You know, like, a 5 up on 6 dice is 2, so that, you know, that it's as simple as that. He also has access to transhuman, so if we already, if we already feel like being wounded is more valuable than minus 1 to hit, then obviously you can transhuman at any point and just make it, fuck it, they can only wound on four. So if they have like a really big one powerful attack, you know, like use an avatar from Eldar. An avatar has like lower number of attacks, but if a single attack goes through, then he's, you know, he's vaporizing your character. So transhumaning could actually be like hugely valuable on Mephiston. And um, many people forget that he is Primaris, so he has access to transhuman. Um, he also has two denies, which I managed to use in a lot of games. Mephiston is so mobile. Seven inch move, 12 inch fly. Yes, his fly can be denied, but if his fly isn't denied, then he's moving 19 inches and he can advance on top of that as well, or he can charge on top of that as well. Um, I actually had it in a tournament game where like, I basically, the enemy tried to run a character that I picked for um, Blade of Sanguinius away from Mephiston, forgetting that he could move twelve, move seven, fly 12, then charge. And he was like 26 inches away. He was thinking he was totally safe. And I jumped right in and killed him. Um, so I, the sword isn't good for Mephiston. His plasma pistol isn't good, but I don't pick him for his sword or his plasma pistol. I am picking him because essentially he's toughness 5 with 8 wounds and access to transhuman and he's a 2 up armor of contempt save. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a problem that he doesn't have an invulnerable save. They have to hit you with an absolute ton of AP. I think they have to hit you with minus 4 AP uh, for it to be worse than a 4 up. Not many things are hitting you with minus 4. Yes, some things do, but even then, you know, you've got the higher toughness, you've got basically those extra wounds from his um feel no pain. So I Picked Mephiston actually just this week, and if you want to watch this week's battle report, uh, and I'm going to link it up above, there was a there was a there was a period of play in that game where Mephiston engaged a Great Unclean One, and Mephiston is 140 points with no CP spent on him. The Great Unclean One was like 335 points with multiple CP spent on him, relics and warlord traits, and Mephiston was able to angel sacrifice three turns in a row, and keep the great unclean one just having to one-on-one -on -one Mephiston. It, actually, in that time, Mephiston did 17 wounds to him. The great unclean one would not have actually killed Mephiston if he didn't roll 2d6 on like his vomit attack and had like 12 attacks into Mephiston. If he'd rolled average, Mephiston would have actually survived for four turns. Mephiston doing this protected a whole squad of Sangre Guard for multiple rounds of combat. As I said, he always almost did 17 wounds as well. And this is a good example in that like, when I was in this combat, everybody was saying like, oh, Astroth would have done a lot more damage to the Great Unclean One. Yeah, well, Astroth would have been dead in one turn because uh, Mephiston obviously was feel no paining a bunch of the things and the Toughness 5 was making the enemy's wound rolls worse, whereas Astroth's Toughness 4 would have probably meant he got wounded on twos. The other thing to say is Astroth might have not done as much damage to the Great Unclean One because the Great Unclean One is actually Toughness 9 which means Astroth would only be wounding on fours, whereas Mephiston with a strength 10 sword and plus one to wound is wounding on twos. So like into a great unclean one, Mephiston is just, a, like he was a great choice in that game. I think that was one of the most MVP performances I've ever had out of Mephiston. And yes, I get some people don't like him and uh, he isn't reliable, you know, like he doesn't have a great deny like he has a psychic hood that's okay and he doesn't have um, anything to give him plus to his casts and he does fail casts and he has a plasma puzzle that can't be fought in high power but I think which when you put all that together you think well you know Mephiston looks crap but like I implore you try him in your games jump him in angel sacrifice save units and just actually see that like this is arguably outside like Gilliman one of the most survivable marine characters that we that any chapter has i guess um and he yes he can he does have d3 damage but d3 damage doesn't mean you always roll badly right and um yeah i i think like mephiston i think if he had like a small buff in the next codex he could be like an auto include for sure i like him a lot right now at 140 points um but please try him don't just flame him don't just say he's bad try him try him try him try him
Brothers, every week I spend a ton of my spare time trying to work out how to get you the best out of your Blood Angels. If that's something that you appreciate that I do, please do consider subscribing. And on any of my videos, I do always love it if you will smash that like button. Right, back to the content. All right, next unit. The Vindicator Laser Destroyer, and this is something else that I've just picked up. Why do I like it? Because I love flat six damage. Um, I actually don't mind D3 plus three damage, but Marines have really limited options for getting D3 plus three damage. We have like the Gladiator Lancer, I think. Is that the only unit that we have that has D3 plus three damage? Like D3 plus three in the Marine Army is like non-existent. Our Codex came out before everything else went to D3 plus three or D6 plus two or whatever. Most of our damage is D6. I mean, Hunter Killer Missiles five points for D6 is tragic. Like they, you know, if they were D6 plus two for five points, maybe I'm interested. But anyway, I love flat six damage. I think if you're fighting against enemy armor in any shape or form, flat six damage is brilliant. And 36 inch range on, on, the, on the volley cannon is really good as well. So, toughness eight, 11 wounds, which is very decent, 175 points, doesn't have martial legacy again, and really can't be ignored. If you have heavy firepower that has d6 da so that has flat six damage or d3 plus three if it moves i guess i mean you can get the flat six when you move but you can potentially take mortals i guess that's fine if you have a tet marine but if you have flat six damage weaponry that the opponent needs to take that out if they have any sort of armor or heavy units in their art in their list they cannot ignore that and that's what you're looking for as a blood angels player and that's why sometimes redemptors like we see it sometimes two contemptors two redemptors if we go back six months, if we go back a year, these were really powerful units in a Blood Angels list. And why was that? Because people felt like they couldn't leave those Contemptors or Redemptors free reign on the battlefield because they would just do too much damage if left alone. And I think in some ways, the Laser Destroyer is a little bit more tricky because if you take a Laser Destroyer, if you come up against a Horde list, it's not going to be very effective at all. So I don't know if I could um, say take two Laser Destroyers, but maybe there's a situation here where you could take like one Laser Destroyer, one Gladiator Reaper or something, and then, depending on the matchup, you know, switch up what's happening. But the the comparison for the Laser Destroyer really is the Gladiator Lancer. So it's 25 points cheaper, but rather than basically um, three shots, it's heavy two, but with the heavy cannon, it gets plus one to hit. So you pay 30 more points-ish for the Laser Destroyer. You get... Three shots hitting on threes as opposed to two shots hitting on twos. So I think mathematically, the laser destroyer comes out a little bit ahead, but it has less range, but the range is 36 inches, which is still good. 36 inches is a very decent range. You know, if you were playing against Sisters of Battle, for example, and I play them a bit, and they always have big squads of retributors, retributors can move six and they've got multi melters so they shoot 24. So this would, you know, if you can if you can shoot 36 with your main cannon, then you can be pretty safe because you can just they can move forward six, you can move back six. You can stay out of range of them, right? And you probably still can hit our other targets pretty reliably with the laser destroyer. So I like the laser destroyer a lot. It's easy to screen it some sort of armor with blood angels. We get so many infantry in the board, we can protect it. And if you're gonna run a tech marine, I guess it's great. It also includes smoke screen, which you don't have to pay extra points for. Um, and then I guess a storm bolt were, but I mean, whoop de doo The main thing here is that you've got a strength 10 minus four and i think the minus four is important because you know if we're fighting enemy marines that have that three up armor of contempt then they're only going to get to save on sixes so for example if you were shooting this at a redemptor dreadnought it's only going to save on sixes and saves on sixes are super unreliable and each shot is going to do six damage one volley if you hit with all three and wound so you would hit on threes wound on threes if that all goes through they're just saving on sixes that cannon has the ability to take out a redemptor in one round of shooting Yes, you would need to get a little bit lucky, but I mean, on an average turn, you're probably doing like 10 damage to Redemptor. It's it's a very decent cannon, um, and it's a good platform as well with a 10-inch move. I like the Vindicator Laser Destroyer. I mean, that's why I've just bought one. Uh, I've yet to run it, but I think it could definitely do some work for Blood Angels. And whenever we um, talk about them on the... Because we get army list submissions every week with Vindicator Laser Destroyers, and if you didn't know, I do a list show every week where I look at players, Blood Angels army lists, and review them and um, you can find that on my community tab i do it every week i think that the laser destroyer 
has value and people always say it does good work. So uh, I'm going to be running one in the future. I'm probably going to do something in between like the Storm Speeder, the Tyrax Laser Destroyer, because one of the things we noticed in this recent da balance data slate is Blood Angels didn't really get any meaningful changes. So we are at 49% win rate army um, and we don't do a lot of mortal wounds and we get mortal wounded to death and there's a lot of counters to us with like fight last so or fight on death. There's, there's loads of counters to the Blood Angels right now. So thinking outside the box and trying to find some ideas that are going to help you win games. And these are three units that I think I'm going to be trying. You know, I'm desperate to win a GT. I'm always trying. Uh, I'm always trying to improve. So, um, tell me what your thoughts are on the Laser Vindicator Destroyer. All right, number five, and this is harkening back to essentially probably about a year ago when everybody was running uh, Contemptor Dreadnoughts with double Volkite. Right? When we've talked about this on the channel, and we've talked about this with a few different people, and I've cut down the Contemptor data sheet here a bit because I just want. All the options are here if you want to read all the options, but I've cut this down a bit to tell you about the options that I like right now. And if I was going to be running Contemptors, what I would be doing. So Contemptor obviously comes with two heavy plasmas, but I think if I was running it at the moment, I would run the Contemptor 140, I would add on the Cyclone for 25, I would add on one Volkite uh, for 15, and then I would add on the Chain Fist for 5. So that brings you in at 185 points. You could then add a Vagraviton Blaster or a Contemptor Blaster or Contemptor Plasma Blaster, sorry, if you don't like a Stormbolt, or I mean the Stormbolt is fine. Um, I think that the the way that, that you make this good is you run one cyclone arm and you run sorry one volkite arm and you run the cyclone on top and then you have the chain fist so this contemptor can do everything right it can shoot reasonably decent with the missiles at high, uh, like slightly more ap it can deal some mortal wounds at 45 inches with the twin volkite and those things swing all over the place you could potentially do five wounds in a single turn with that heavy eight volkite but then it's also no slump in combat in that the chain fist averages four damage which is 2d3 it can do six damage and it has really nice ap you compare that to some of the other uh combat weapons on the dreadnoughts that are minus three this is minus four uh, so again when armor of contempt is in the picture if you get into assault doctor and you're minus five then there is no save from armor of contempt right so and there's no save from armor of contempt and it's basically four damage or six into vehicles so this gives you your contemptor like it makes it an all-round contemptor and i think the double volkite are cool and you can run missile or you can run like shooting platforms you can run them without missiles or with missiles you could just run double contemptor uh volkite for like 170 points now where you make them 195 with the cyclone and i think that's fine i think it's it's still a valid unit it's still valid for blood angels it's maybe not as popular as it was but it's still it's still decent and i have run one um recently in a list just because when they when they brought all the points back down for the sangry guard and they put the points for the volkites up then it kind of averaged out so i ran an older list just to see how it felt and volkites are fine but they are swingy so by adding that cyclone missile launcher by adding that chain fist and by adding either a graviton blaster or a plasma blaster you suddenly take a unit that could be swingy and add some reliability to it and also add some real melee threat or real close range slash melee threat right because that's extra basically plasma shots in close range that's a crazy damage chain fist um you know the cyclones can even be still sh shot in combat if you shoot uh, crack missiles because they aren't blast uh another cool thing about the contemptor is it is core so uh gets benefit from like re-rolls or uh, anything like that i mean there's other there's other strats and other things that benefit core that's another video in itself it has duty eternal minus one damage it also has an vulnerable save and that's a five up in one uh, which most of our blood angel stuff do not have in buns um, and obviously dreadnoughts are cool so this is a cool dreadnought um, I highly advise if you're making Contemptors, and I know there's a new release from Horus Heresy with Contemptors, that you magnetize them, because if you don't magnetize them, they seem to like to change these Dreadnought weapons every edition. And if you're not magnetized, you're going to get screwed next edition when a different weapon is better. So I highly advise you, magnetize these Contemptors, but try this one. We've done a bunch of testing on the channel, and this one is the one that stands out to me as 
interesting, I guess. Uh, I don't know if it's amazing, but I think it makes it very all an all-round thing. And I think Blood Angels, if you are bringing fire support, if you can bring something that is more all-round, you're going to see more benefit. And the one thing that I did see, this has the Marshall Legacy keyboard, so this is going to cost you one CP to include them. I always think Dreadnoughts work best in pairs, so it's maybe going to cost you two CP. Normally that might be a problem, but a lot of people write to run Dante as your Warlord. So if you're going to run Dante as your Warlord, think of using one of his free CP to get one of these Dreadnoughts. So how do you compare two Contemptors loaded up like this to two Redemptors? Now I think I prefer the two Contemptors because if you're if you're going to run a priest, which I think is core or super important for Blood Angels right now, then yes, these have four less wounds, but they have the invulnerable save and they have no profile. So even on one wound remaining, if you give them chapter master rerolls or if you're near something that's going to give core rerolls, and remember they can wisdom of the ancient and give themselves rerolls or a bubble around them, then they're fucking scary. You know, you've got a one wound dreadnought hitting on threes, re-rolling ones, and getting six chain fist attacks in turn three. That's still scary. It needs dealt with. And um, Contemptors aren't huge. Like, if you think of the base size of a Redemptor or Leviathan, these things take up a lot of board space, difficult to conceal. Contemptors are much, much smaller. Um, so yeah, don't sleep on the Contemptor just because it's fallen out of, like, this, the thing is, like, yes, it's fallen out of like a lot of top lists, but here's the thing. Blood Angels aren't winning tournaments, right? The all melee list, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Uh, we, I'm going to be covering another list that by a top Blood Angels player next week. We did one a couple of weeks back, and again, I can link it up above if you want to see it, and it was a, a fourth place finish. Um, the all melee Blood Angels lists are not winning events. They're doing well. They're going like 4-1, and 5-1, and one, but they're not getting over that final hurdle. So why not try something different? If you're struggling right now, that's what I advocate for the current, the current meta. Yeah, so I have said multiple times, I think it is an interesting time. Latest Balance Slate has made minor changes, but I think nothing's majorly changed. Uh, I think we're still in the bottom of the pack. I mean, there's still armies that have like a 10% higher win rate than us. I think even when we look at Meta Watch in three months' time, we'll still see armies that are about 10% above us. So I try and always be positive. I try not let any of the rules get me down. So every, it, it feels like I said this six months ago, or, or, I mean, I've had to say it multiple times this edition. Try and have fun. Uh, you know, Yes, I like to win games, but ultimately, try and have fun. And that's why I took a super heavy tank to a tournament. That's why I'm running a Storm Speeder when no one else is doing it. That's why I bought a Terax when I... I'm actually surprised no no more Blood Angels players play the Terax, because I really like the look of the rules. And I think a Toughness 8 vehicle like that arriving from Deep Strike sounds scary as hell if you put something inside it that can help double up on Relentless Assault. So, yeah... That's it. Don't let the meta get you down. I hope you enjoyed this sort of different tactics week. I, I wanted to do something different because I didn't want to just bash the data slate. I like the shock tactics uh, change. I do actually like that. If you haven't seen my breakdown of the data slate, that is over on my podcast channel. And again, uh, you can find a link to that on the community site or you can just search on YouTube Three Grots because that is my podcast channel we put out content every second thursday if you enjoyed tonight's video please hit that like button i do really appreciate you I want to say thanks again to all the channel members that make doing this for me possible and if you are ever going to buy anything i guess in this festive season or uh, in black friday or anything like that then please do look in our my video descriptions there's links to like element games there's links to amazon there's links to audible where you can get a free audio book um, if, if you use any of these links that does help support the channel and I super appreciate it as always I have been John the Blood Angels Commander if you have a suggestion for another unit that didn't make this list and you want to put it in the video description I'd love to hear from you and I can definitely cover it in a future tactics video until next time brothers I'll catch you on the flip side by the blood are we made strong peace